Hello there, Ray here, and today I will be going over how you can obtain every single item, block, and mob that is new for 1.17 so you can get all these cool things in your survival world. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about which items you cannot obtain so far in survival and why this is the case. So if you enjoyed learning about all the new changes in Minecraft and what cool things you can do with those, make sure you subscribe because that's all my channel is about. Coming up with cool and crazy inventions by understanding how the game works. There is over 100 new items for survival, so let's get started. Geos are new structures that can be found underground. They can either be completely hidden in the ground or they can be also connected to caves nearby. And you'll happen upon them while you are mining. This is where you can mine up the block of amethyst. This is also where you can find the budded amethyst, but you can't obtain that as an item. The outside of these are made up of the calcite and the very outside layer is made up of the new smooth basalt. You can also get smooth basalt by smelting up normal basalt inside of a furnace. Although these buds can't be obtained, they will grow buds on top of them. They start out as the small amethyst buds, then they grow to the medium sized ones, and then to the large, and then finally the cluster. If you mine them when they are the largest with a pickaxe or break them off, they will drop amethyst shards. If you use a silk touch on them at any size, you will obtain the appropriate size. As an item, you can get all four variations of the buds, and they are just for aesthetics. And using fortune on these will give you more shards. With four shards, you make one block of amethyst, and four shards combined with a glass block can produce two tinted glass, another new item for 1.17. There's also new ore that can be found in the world. You can find this underground. It is between wide level 192 all the way down to the very bottom of the world, wide level zero. And you can find the most of it at Y level 96. This is copper ore. You can mine this up with a pickaxe and it's going to drop raw copper, which is a new item with 1.17. You can also use a silk touch on it. This will drop the ore block that you see and it's called copper ore. Now using fortune on these ore blocks will produce more raw copper. Now either having the raw copper or the copper ore, either of these can be put into a furnace. They're going to produce the copper ingot. The ore block will produce one and we can also place in our raw copper and that's also going to produce one ingot. Alternatively, you can kill drowns for a chance at a copper ingot. The one thing you can do with your raw copper is you can take nine of them and produce a block of raw copper, which is another new block with a 1.17. You can also take your copper ingots and produce a copper block. It only takes four of those to produce one block. Some other things that you can do with your copper is two copper ingots and your amethyst shard will produce a spyglass, another new item. Also, three copper ingots will produce a lightning rod, a new block. Your copper blocks can be turned into cut copper and cut copper can be made into cut copper stairs and slabs. Now if you place down copper blocks, over time they will convert into a more oxidized variation, give you a new block called exposed copper, and then they'll turn into weather coppered, and then eventually into oxidized copper. And each of these variations can be picked up again with a pickaxe and can be turned into cut variations. And each cut variation can be made into stairs as well as slabs. With honeycomb, you can apply a layer of wax to each of these, which prevents them from being oxidized anymore or from being cleaned accidentally. Each of these variations can also be picked up as a block and they're called wax copper. And just like the normal ones, there can also be other copper, the wax ones can also be crafted down into the cut variations. And each wax cut variation can also be crafted down into stairs and slabs of each type. We got quite a few new items already. That's 48 new items. That's with two main features. Let's take a look at the rest. Gold ore now when mine doesn't produce the block, but instead it produces raw gold. Same thing applies to the iron ore. So I'd break one. Now we have raw iron. Fortune will produce more of these items out of each of these blocks. And Silk Touch can be used to obtain the actual ore block like in olden times. You can still obtain these as blocks or items. Now the raw forms can be smelted down into the ingot forms. So raw iron will turn into a iron ingot. Same for the raw gold that will turn into a gold ingot. And you can still smelt down the block forms of each if you want to. New raw items can be converted into raw blocks, producing 
two more new items block of raw gold and block of raw iron near the bottom of the world from y level 17 to 0 you can find this new block in big blobs similar to that you can find like andesite granite or diorite and when mined up with a normal pickaxe you will get cobbled deep slate if you use a silk touch pickaxe you will get just deep slate Cobbled deep slate can be turned into stair variations as well as slabs and they can also be made into walls. It can also be smelted back and turned into the normal deep slate. Similar to like cobble is turned back into normal stone. Two cobble deep slate slabs produce one chisel deep slate or cobble produces four polished. Polish can be crafted down into stair variations, slabs, and walls. Polish can be turned into bricks, and bricks can be turned into stairs, slabs, and walls. And if you put bricks into a stone cutter, you can get deep slate tile, stairs, slabs, and walls. And just like the other infested stone blocks in the game, you can also get infested deep slate as a block can't get it as an item in survival. But the way you get it as a block is just by having a silverfish near a deep slate. And now this is an infested deep slate block. It doesn't matter what you use on it, it will just revert to a normal deep slate. Now in these areas where there is deep slate blocks, you can find a variation of all the different ores put in deep slate. These act like normal ores and can be fortuned or can be silk touch for a new unique block called a deep slate ore. Now all the ores in 1.17 are in the same locations that you would find them in 1.16. But to find the deep slate, you have to find them among the deep slate blocks, which means you have to find them between Y level 0 and 16. So by searching the bottom of the world, you can find the deep slate variations of iron, gold, lapis, redstone, and even diamonds. Now at the time of this recording, there is a bug which prevents coal, copper, and emeralds from showing up as a deep slate variation in survival. But once a bug is fixed, you should be able to find all three of these as well. Emerald being the most rare, as it had to be found inside of a mountain biome at the very bottom of the world. Also at the bottom of the world from Y level 0 to 16, you can find another new block, which is the tough block. This also forms in blobs. Another new item that you can find randomly throughout the caves is the glow lichen. It does glow, which makes it a little bit easier to find. You also can find some dripstone blocks as well as pointed dripstone and these can be mined up for new block and new items. And they're also randomly throughout the caves. If you do find quite a bit of pointed dripstone, you can use four of them to produce dripstone block. Alternatively, you can find a wandering trader that sells pointed dripstone two for one emerald, and that's how you can obtain it in Skyblock. Alternatively, you can get a mason villager at a journeyman level to sell you four dripstone blocks for one emerald. When you're making your way around a mine shaft, there's a chance that you will find glow berries inside of them. This is another new item for 1.17. It can be also known as cave vines and can grow or be bone milled to get more. You can also find a wandering trader selling rooted dirt, another new block, two for one emerald. Once you get your rooted dirt, if you place it down and then bone mill it, it will produce a hanging root underneath of it. And then if you use shears on that, you will get a hanging root item. There's also a chance of finding a wandering trader that sells two small drip leaf for one emerald, another new item. With your small drip leaf, if you place it onto clay and then you bone mill it, it's going to turn into a big drip leaf. Then you can break off each of these parts and it will drop big drip leaf as an item. Wandering traders sell a new block, which is the moss block. You get two of them for one emerald. With your moss block, if you place it near some natural stone or dirt variations and you bone mill it, it's going to spread the moss block and convert those other blocks around it into moss blocks. You can then mine these up for more of the blocks. And when you bone mill them, there is a chance of getting moss carpets, which is another new block 1.17. There's also the azalea bush and there's a flowering azalea bush variation. You can also find moss blocks inside of the chest in a shipwreck. You could also use two moss blocks to produce the moss carpet. And when you're making your way around in the caves, you can find some new mobs in the game. This is the axolotl. These guys can spawn in any type of water that is under the sea level and is in an ocean. And you can get a new type of item by using a bucket of water and right clicking on these guys and you can pick them right up. And they can be placed down anywhere. Another new mob that spawns in the same way is the glow squid. 
And if you kill a glow squid, it has a chance of dropping a new item, which is called glow ink sack. And these new items can be crafted into another new item, and that is the glow item frame. So you got item frame plus the glow ink sack, which says one glow item frame. There's also a new item that can be crafted using old items, and that is having six rabbit hides and two string will produce one bundle. Another new block for 1.17 is the candle. This can be made using the honeycomb and a string. Candles can also be dyed for all 16 colors. In the extreme hills biome, we can also find another new mob, and this is the goat. These can be found in the mountain biome, also known as extreme hills. You gotta watch out, they'll try to bunch you. And when the goat attempts to hit you, if it misses and hits something solid, like a tree in the background, it will drop one of its horns. At the time of this recording, this isn't available in Java, but it will be added. Now, while you're in this mountain biome, or any biome that produces snow, when it snows, there's a chance that if you put out a cauldron, it will slowly fill up with layers. And when it is completely full, you can pick it up with a empty bucket, and you get another new item, which is outer snow bucket. This also produces the powder snow block. With this item obtained, you have now just collected every single item possible in survival for 1.17, the first part. So now let's talk about some items that you can get in creative as well as what happened to other items that are supposed to come with 1.17 but are getting postponed. So the first creative only item is the light item and you can do slash give yourself light. And if I go ahead and do that, you get this item here. And it can also be placed down as a light block. There's also a new entity for 1.17 that's for creative only, and this is called Marker. You can summon in just like so, but when it's in the game, you can't see it whatsoever. So it's used for making maps. So now let's talk about some blocks that are in the creative menu and will eventually come to survival, but aren't currently possible to obtain in survival. So these are the azalea leaves, both the plain and the flowering. We also got the spore blossom and the gulk sensor. Now the way you normally get the leaves is by finding azalea trees that are over top of lush caves. And since they're not adding in lush caves in the first part of 1.17 update, there's no way for us to get the leaves. Now for the spore blossoms, they also are part of the lush caves. And at the time of this recording, the only way you would get these is by creative or a lush cave biome, which doesn't exist in the normal generation of the game. The skulk sensor is part of the deep dark, which is going to be another biome that will be eventually added in, in the 1.17 part 2. And because we're not getting the deeper caves in part 1, we're not going to get anything related to the deep dark, including the skulk sensor. This also means we won't get the warden mob, because he also presides there. As well as we won't get the other skulk-like blocks that they showed during the Minecraft live event until 2021 Christmas. Because we don't have the deep caves, we also don't get the diamond fossils, because those only generate below Y level 0. And normal fossils generate between Y level 40 and 49. Because they're not doing any biome changes until the second part as well, we're not going to get any of the tall mountains, including the naturally generated powder snow and the new type of ore generation which will come with it. Now they also said that we aren't going to get archaeology with 1.17 altogether, meaning we're not going to get it in the first part or the second part, it's going to be in a later version. So if you followed along and you obtained all these items, you just obtained almost 100 new items for 1.17. If you'd like to know how you can obtain all these items automatically with AFK farms in your world, I've designed a farm for every single one of these. You can check those out on my simple Farms and Machines playlist, which I'll have linked down below. And if you want to know exactly all the changes that come out with 1.17, check out my Minecraft News playlist. If there's any changes or additions to this list, I'll make edits in my description as well as pinned comment. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming updates for Minecraft. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys leave a like as well as share this video with others. I would like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!